Blessings, beloved. One of the most interesting things about DNA is how it creates our experience of time. Now, DNA, of course, as the interface for our experience in the physical, has that second strand that's responsible for the experience of duality and time. And as the energies increase and as our ascension process goes along, we end up freeing uh, that strand from that denser structure. And the strand is still there. It's still creating the experience of linear time. However, we get freed from it because it goes multidimensional and then we're able to perceive several dimensions or several realities at once. We get into a more simultaneous experience. And here's why. So time is based on our experience of time is created by not just our own thoughts but strong emotional imprints that create memory so when we have an experience we're actually imprinting the field and imprinting our own dna which is a record of everything that we've done and everything that we will do so you're actually imprinting the field and imprinting collective fields with your attachment or your strong emotion associated with an event. So you get the series of events, it's kind of like a film strip. And then the series of events begins to feel like or look like linear time. So when we do emotional clearing, we're actually clearing the emotional baggage or the karmic baggage that is associated with those memories of the past and then we free ourselves from the denser magnetic. It's actually creating density, a magnetic, to hold events in place within our consciousness and within our DNA. So as we do our emotional clearing of negative emotions, you know, as anything uncomplimentary to our journey or karmic baggage, then we're actually freeing the DNA to express, to give us the experience of something else. And again, the epigenetic overriding of creating a new experience can't happen simultaneously if you still have those old beliefs and those old emotional constructs that, that uh, influence your behavior, influence the way you react to things, the things that kind of shape your journey before you're awake and that we do all that clearing on, those start to dissipate and then you don't get these dense memory fields because the DNA is holding on to that. And if your brain and your emotions are saying, so it is, so it is, so it is, remember the so it is. If you've taken my classes before, but so it is after everything that you're thinking, saying, and doing, and that's your reality. So if you are continually imprinting the field with, I'm this way because of that, I'm this because of that, even if it's a past life, even if you're bringing in karmic baggage of, oh, I drowned once, therefore I'm afraid of water, you know, carrying that stuff with you. As we clear all of that through the ascension process, then your memory fields start opening up. So you don't have the mind going to that. You don't have the DNA going, so it is. Because the DNA is just responding to your subconscious. So that's the imprinting that causes the DNA to create that record of density and when you tell the DNA to do something else your experience of time starts to change which is what we are experiencing now because again we are merging into a different kind of consciousness into the higher self consciousness so we're letting all this stuff go so our experience of time becomes very different you start losing your memories you start and I'm not talking about like a blank slate kind of thing you lose the emotional charge and the density associated with events. So you can revisit anything, anything along your timeline. Think of this as a timeline. You can revisit anything along your DNA timeline. It's just the charge as to whether or not it's affecting your subconscious, your emotional state, or your thoughts that create that experience of linear time. So when you let that go, no more linear time. A couple of really interesting things. The, I, if you ever investigated Terence McKenna's work with Time Wave Zero, he took the I Ching, that ancient Asian system for, for divining uh, what's happening in the now, and he, he looked at it and studied it and realized that, those, that the 64 codons of DNA were a mirror 
of what was happening in the I Ching with the 64 different kinds of events that could occur. And he started mapping out global history for as far back as he could go, and he noticed that it paralleled what was happening with the I Ching, what was happening with DNA, and what was happening with this, this uh, increase in events. He called it novelty. The increase in events getting faster and faster, there's more and more events compressed into time. So he said, wow, time is speeding up. And then, of course, as we go through the shift, we're starting to experience like, wow, we, there was like so much happening in moments that all of a sudden you just come out of it uh, as a collective and you start freeing yourself from time. And that's the experience that we're having now. Um, and I linked a, a video so you can you can check that out. I just found that really fascinating that even back in ancient Asia, they knew about DNA and how DNA registered events on the collective consciousness. Because yes, it's your personal experience, but in unity, we're actually creating all of these realities as a collective consciousness, and it's actually being created through the DNA. I find that really fascinating. So we're imprinting these fields and memories with new information as we go through. Again, the so it is. Not attached to outcomes, not attached to emotional reaction reactions, getting into heart coherence, where your ability to be in divine neutrality and serve as a master is getting more and more amplified so the DNA is able to open up and start giving you the experience of the full 12 strands, the full 12 layers. The other reason for, for this occurring, this lack of time thing, time wave zero, zero point time, going into these, these concrescent events where, uh, where you don't experience time, is the new light itself. So it's changing the magnetics. So the magnetic fields around Gaia, around yourself, and around the DNA are all these Taurus fields, again, nesting within each other, and you're dissolving the, the reality that was closest to you, just like Gaia did, dissolving the reality that was closest to you, the tightest, densest, most magnetic, closest to the core, and then it's, it's freeing you to experience the next layer, the next dimension, the next density, of experience already exists again this is quantum already exists so then you're expanding out and if you've taken my classes before we work with the Taurus fields expanding out into that next level layer Taurus field into the finer more refined less dense fields and this is what the crystalline grid is about creating that grid around Gaia for her ascended self she's already there you as a multidimensional being already there, starting to merge with the higher consciousness, and the DNA starting to open up through this change in magnetics and gravity on the planet, fully supporting that. You know the magnetosphere is getting diminished so that new light can come in. This is the same thing with your body. It's the same thing with your DNA. And again, your intention and conscious choice to create with that new light is the key. So that gravity of the density of your emotions, the density of memory, the density of the old magnetics is changing. And because it is affecting the whole body vehicle, it's affecting the DNA. So the DNA itself is able to tap into these extra strands and, and layers and fields so that it can give you a different experience. All part of our evolution. Getting rid of karma. Of course you have to learn your lessons. Of course you have to clear your baggage, but it's getting more and it's getting faster. So again, with this time wave zero thing, more and more events, more and more clearing, more and more happening at the same time. And that's where the balance comes in. You've got to maintain that balance because as our experience of time drops away, it's a different level of consciousness. So you want to stay as balanced as possible through this. But let's get into how you can actually use this information to ascend your consciousness, to affect your personal journey, and just become the highest trajectory, the highest level beingness uh, possible in your experience. So the highest version of you. So we start looking at DNA outcomes, timeline. That's timeline work. And when there's, there's no separation in form is the goal to experience God in form, to experience your Christed self, which is something that you 
do. No one comes along and puts the crown on your head. You claim it. <laughs> you claim that as your divine birthright. And trust me, if you're a being who decided to come here and play with divine human DNA, that is your modus operandi. That is your goal. If you're awake in this now moment, you have made a choice at some soul level to participate in this ascension process. And whether it's supporting uh, other beings who are playing with the human genome to support humanity itself or to have that experience personally, it does not matter. So we're, our experience of no separation in form is the goal. So there's new timelines becoming available to us. So this dense experience of time has changed and we created, all of us created these overlays, these these uh, other timelines, and timelines look just like this. They're all based on the Taurus field. And you end up migrating your reality, jumping timelines, as we say, to a higher vibrational, higher frequency timeline experience. And you get into the, the, price, the Christed, primary Christed timelines, and that provides this divine experience. So when you're shifting timelines, raising your vibration, doing all the practices in this class, you end up slipping away from the denser timelines, and then you move into where the, the Christed timelines are all about the divine service and the divine will and the divine love being a consistent experience. And of course, new earth is already there, so we're kind of riding these new timelines to the experience of new earth, but new earth itself doesn't have those kind of dense timelines at all. We're simply riding this primary Christed timeline experience to the next level, and it's quite beautiful. Another point I would like to make at this point in the journey is to remember that we are quantumly entangled with these higher experiences. We have already set forth the timelines for the Ascension experience, and that's why we're riding this experience of time becoming less dense and time and memory kind of slipping away. That timeline is in place in order to migrate realities, in order to cross the bridge, the rainbow bridge, <laughs> to that new experience. Now, keeping in heart that your DNA already has a record of your ascended self, you start merging, asking, intending to merge with that higher self, that Christ itself that already exists. So your DNA has a record of those possible outcomes already. So the obsession that the New Age had with digging in the past to find out who was I, who was I, who was I is ending, thank goodness. So now we're starting to play with, well, what's the future trajectory? So we remember that the choices that we make in the now moment quantumly entangle us with future outcomes. So as we release all the quantum entanglement of the past, we're actually quantumly entangled. And sometimes this, this term scares people sometimes. So don't get frightened by the term entanglement. It just means that you have that trajectory in heart. Your soul, your oversoul has that higher trajectory already in place. It already knows who you can become and then by this quantum entanglement, it's kind of pulling you toward that goal. So that, again, is um, some, some of the facets of this, this beautiful crystalline DNA that are responsible for increasing your levels of faith and the desire to ascend, the desire to reunify with your God self. That is part of the quantum entanglement. So it's, it's beautiful. And you can actually clear things in the future, too, just by making higher choices in the moment. All of your power is in the now. We've heard that so much, but that zero point energy, getting into the stillness, feeling the desired outcome is where all your power is. And the more that you practice that, the more that you'll be able to apply it to the now, day to day in your everyday life, which is beautiful that we're stepping into that level of mastery. Alrighty. So we have this collective influence on our trinitized awareness. So we're no longer in duality consciousness, this or that, good or bad, positive, negative. We're not, we're, we're not gonna play with that any longer. The trinitized beingness allows the DNA 
when you really get into it. It allows the DNA to etherically rebundle, reconnect, open up the stargates, get aligned, and then you start behaving and thinking and feeling from the state of trinitized beingness that allows you to perceive and experience multiple dimensions, multiple expressions at once, simultaneously. It takes some getting used to, and it's something that we can play with, and we'll be playing with that in the guided meditation for this section. But keep in heart that anytime you kind of hmm, flip-flop or go back to duality consciousness, there's absolutely no judgment. You can take your time. We have plenty of time. But the trinitized state of beingness can handle multiple out it can look at multiple outcomes it can make the highest choice it can feel into what is good for the collective as well as myself what is good for um, highest levels of service as as well as myself as well as the person next door as well as the the galaxy as well as the planetary consciousness all of this starts coming into our awareness so that our divine wisdom as ascended beings really starts to come back. It's quite lovely. And the, the last uh, thing that I want to mention with time dynamics and DNA is that our DNA has been called the Living Library for a while, as well as Gaia, and you can see why. It's the divine reflection providing that experience. But all of you in the caves of creation, which are a real thing in the core of Gaia, uh, allow for the divine records to be kept of not only Gaia and the galaxy and the universe, but that divine human genome aspect that remembers you and everything that you've done here. So we work with that crystalline DNA. That crystalline DNA, the reason why it's called crystalline or Christed, is because it has that aspect that can keep a lot of information, a lot of God self simultaneously all in the same place. So we're also going to play with unlocking the living library and that means your DNA gets empowered. So that sense of empowerment, of knowing yourself, even if you're not aware of everywhere you've been and everywhere you're going to be, that doesn't matter. It's the choices you make in this now moment that produce your outcomes. So a lot of the time when you're emotionally imprinting things, you get angry at an email or a social media comment or what that guy's doing over there or the the big bad guys and you know, all all of that stuff if you can step back into divine neutrality and non-judgment you start being able to see all the outcomes you can feel it you feel into highest outcomes and then really lighting up the dna so that it operates like a primary Christed timeline. It's starting to produce that experience right within your cells, right within your consciousness as a, as a platform for an experience, a higher experience of time and zero points.